New Development Bank, when it was established, it already vowed to be apolitical. But now, Mr. President, I have to say this because the world is getting ever more complex. What we have now, very different from the time, even just a few years back, when the a development institution was established. So, do you think NDP can still remain apolitical? You know, the founding fathers who uh, set up NDP were uh, able to look into the future and see the challenges that we have today. Mm -hmm. To say, say six, seven years back, that uh, you need uh, the BRICS countries to come together because there are certain headwinds which you see in the environment. When I uh, say BRICS country, I, countries, I use it as a, a wider phrase the developing world to come together uh, to uh, face the headwinds that uh, we will see in the future. In fact, I would say that uh, this is a time when we'll see not only BRICS members, but the developing world coming together mm. to uh, you know, just uh, ensure that they have a fair uh, chance in uh, growth and in uh, uh, getting where they want to be. How are the rules are changing from your perspective? I think uh, very simply, if you look at uh, today, if I look at today, uh, it's changing by uh, an attempt to redo the trade rules. Now, what and to what extent uh, and how they would uh, succeed, time will tell us. But I was just li listening to uh, the, the, the Russian uh, economics minister five minutes back, and he said that we are in a uh, uh, 100-year trade war. This is not an overnight thing. My own view is that it's probably a shorter uh, a period when things will settle down because mm -hmm. this cannot continue for very long. What do you mean by shorter period of time? You want to be a See, we are, more we are, in, we are in an interconnected world yes. where supply chains dictate what happens. And you cannot allow supply chains to remain disrupted for anything more than six months to a year. But so it I, is being disrupted right now. Right now. So I'm saying that we are looking at resolution within one to two years. Hundred years was probably a figure of speech. But in the real world today, uh, things will have to happen much quicker. So you think a rational mind will eventually be the one that wins? Indeed. Rational minds will be the one that wins. Uh, and my own belief is that the developing world will have a say in this whole process. They will have a seat at the table mm. when this is decided. Well, it could be a hope, but would that be a reality, Mr. President? Let's just start from New Development Bank, for example. Uh, it's been developing for several years. It has beautiful agenda. It's been doing pragmatic projects, but it is still small, relatively. Let's say if you compare to Asia Development Bank, which is an institution Japan started decades ago and been contributing uh, together with others, and also if you look at the World Bank, of course, uh, both of these entities are very viable and constructive entities. But you know, comparing yours with theirs is still a long way to go. So when you say fair share to set the rules. Are you serious? Yeah, it's, not just, uh, it's not just the banks. Mm. I'll talk about the NDB in a minute. I think this is a, a seat at the table of the whole, the way business is being done. Yes. And that comes from a different context. The banks is in a way secondary. The primary context is who is driving global trade today? Mm. It is the developing world. Within that, the BRICS countries. Who is accounting for larger and larger share of the world's GDP. It is, uh, again, the BRICS countries and the developing world. Mm -hmm. And the rate at which they are growing is significantly different, higher than the rate at which uh, the developed world is growing. So you have uh, a set of countries which are growing much faster, mm -hmm. who did not have a voice at the table, they will have a voice at the table. In a way, the NDB was symbolizing this. Uh, I admit that uh, a single institution cannot change uh, the pattern. That is done by a voice at the table and that is dictated by what's your share in overall trade. But I think an NDB or a new, any other new institution is a symbolic gesture. Mm -hmm. And I articulated this earlier. It was probably the first time that the developing world symbolized where the BRICS said, we developing countries, we countries from the south can stand on our own feet and we can find out solutions for ourselves. Mm. And very interesting in our case, uh, we are clearly finding out that there are solutions beyond you know, strong currencies from developed countries. There are solutions with the uh, local currencies. You know, mm -hmm. We have already done uh, two issues in uh, China, renminbi bond issues. We are just launching a ruble bond issue here. Yeah. Uh, we Probably next month we will be launching a South African uh, 
a RAND issue, and there is enormous momentum in this activity. Again, we will not change the world as an institution, but we will be the catalyst for that change. And I think our forefathers founded us mm. on the basis that let's see what you could do in a catalytic, catalytic context. For NDV, what is the best scenario of the latest changes? What is the worst scenario that NDB, you as the president now, have to prepare for? Our key business is not going to be impacted, whatever be the, the best case scenario or the worst case scenario, because the need for infrastructure, which is our core, yes. modern infrastructure. On the other hand, what about NDB itself? You've been committing to do sustainability. That's the key word for NDB from start, from day one. Is there much pressure for NDB to identify on your own, together with others, the best the projects to throw your money on. See, uh, if I look at it uh, in context, what is happening in NDB's case is our borrowers, by and large, are preparing the projects and uh, basically providing us the projects. We work at very uh, high speed to then deliver those projects to those countries. And that's what's keeping the momentum going. In certain countries where the system was different, where you have to go and uh, find those projects and do it, uh, for example, it was so in Russia, it was so in uh, South Africa and Brazil. I think we have learned the art of how to go into a country, where to source the project, how to evaluate it and do it. So if I were talking to you last year, <coughs> I would have said that we have a skew. China and India have a large part of our borrowing. Yes. Other three countries are a smaller share. But by the end of this year, I would think that uh, everybody would have more or less uh, imbalance. So, uh, so we have very quickly corrected that uh, skew. Mm -hmm. And we are finding that there's a very large pipeline. So our aim by end of 2019 mm -hmm. is to have a book of between 15 and 16 billion uh, dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at the pipeline that is happening, and that's happening with our talking to these countries and generating projects. If there are projects where we can uh, co-finance with other institutions, we'll be very happy to do that. Yeah. But we did not feel the urgency either from you know a project pipeline or from skills. So we're one philosophical difference that we had from many other institutions is that you will learn by doing so and that's the fastest way to learn and you need to have talent to supervise what is being done and you get that talent for three months or six months from people who have had vast experience yes. to sit with you and do it but you learn yourself and your young, young team will learn faster and that's I think proving out to be a, a positive. Mm. However, on the other hand, as a journalist, I have to raise all the questions that's possible on the horizon. What if there were situations, this is a hypothetical question, what if there were situations in which all these emerging economies, the BRICS, they are not only partners, but they're also competing. That's a very healthy competition, as you see, uh, at different areas. But what about the fact that some try to divide and conquer? saying, well, maybe one of those emerging economies would take the place of the other emerging economies and therefore be able to let this group not function as much as they would like to. Uh, or use the name of being apolitical, not to be able to have a united voice. Mr. President, I'm sure you have to deal with issues related to what I just asked on a daily basis. What do you make of these possibilities? Yeah, well, uh, I don't, at this point in time, I have to deal with this on a <laughs> daily basis. Your projected scenario, I might have to deal with it on mm -hmm. a daily basis. But I don't think it's going to happen uh, in the, at least, in the near term. In near term, I mean three to five years. The reason yeah. is, <coughs> there is enough to grow in our five countries, in the areas that we are talking of. There's enough to grow. That situation arises where growth opportunities are constrained. Now take uh, even China, for example, which we all know and we are proud of, is so far ahead of others. There is so much investment that is possible in several parts of China mm. where the growth engine will be ticking for a long period of time. Same is true of India, same is true of South Africa. Yes. Then when you look at, in proper context, Russia or Brazil. So I, with this set of countries, I don't think that day is going to come very soon. We are expecting very soon the G20 summit, later June in which many of the BRICS countries are going to be present over there. I think it is going to be uh, one of the most uh, important G20 summits in a long time. Yes. Because uh, everything is now on the table. Till the last summit uh, there were, uh, you know, maybe there was noise. But now it is on the table. 
And uh, I would expect that uh, those members of the G20 who are still in the development phase will have a voice which is, uh, you know, probably will last to be heard. Mm. And how it will play out, we will have to see. But uh, they certainly will ask to be heard. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Tianvi. Yes. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you. Bye-bye.